Tonight is our, one of our Estuaries Unmasked Seminar Nights and um, we run these twice a year and um, the Estuary Watch program runs them. So my name's Kate Wynn, for people who don't know me, and um, I'm an Estuary Watch coordinator for the Karangamite region. We've also got Rose Herbin here, who is out the front, which a lot of you would know, and she's another Estuary Watch coordinator. And we also have a Water Watch facilitator here tonight, but she's incognito, but that's her there. <laughs> and her name's Jess O'Brien, and she also works for the Karangamite Catchment Management Authority and has joined us recently. So, hello, Jess. Um, so, what tonight is all about is just about getting everyone learning a little bit more about their local estuaries and um, issues relevant to estuaries. So we've got two really great passionate speakers tonight. We've got Justin O'Connor from the Arthur Ryler Institute and we've got um, David Mossop from the Environment Protection Authority. So before we hear from them, I just wanted to give you a little um, rundown on Estuary Watch and what we're all about. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about Estuary Watch and a lot of you know about Estuary Watch, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a rundown Karangamite Estuary Watch is part of a statewide program which is called Estuary Watch Victoria. Over the um, next eight years, we have a management objective for Estuary Watch Victoria, which is to increase the knowledge of community and waterway managers. So it's not just about community members, it's about those people that work on waterways. So councils, committees of management, um, and I guess environmental professionals as well. We want to provide them with the information they need to manage our estuaries better. So we're all about building waterway stewardship. So getting people to care about their local estuary. And as we all know, the best way to care about something is when you know more about it. So that's what Estuary Watch is all about. We do this through four different ways. Um, we're trying to achieve this through increasing community knowledge and skills on how to monitor the estuary condition. So that's, I guess, the cornerstone of Estuary Watch. So we get volunteer community members to go out and monitor their local estuary. Um, we also want to get communities involved in estuary-based engagement events and monitoring activities. So we do have our core sort of monitoring where we get our water quality data, but we also have, um, you know, special events where we might do an um, education activity for schools or we might take some people out electrofishing just to see what that's all about and um, the fish species that they find in an estuary. We also want to um, just get a broad community awareness raising. So lots of people come along to events like this tonight where um, they wouldn't be involved in the rest of Estuary Watch, but they come along tonight to just, um, I guess, get a bit, a bit more information under their belt about their local estuary. And that's their only involvement with Estuary Watch, and that's fine. They'll go away and they'll know a little bit more about their estuary. We also go to, um, as you can see in the pictures here, we go, we go to a lot of community festivals and events um, along the coast throughout the year. So boat shows and... Um, you know, markets and things like that, just to let people know more about Estuary Watch. And we often catch a lot of new people at those events. Another thing we really try to do is increase the availability of reliable and relevant estuary condition data. Um, and this is done through, um, we do an annual summary of each of the Estuary Watch um, estuaries that we have. So this is the Spring Creek Estuary in Torquay. Um, that's our 2014 data, which is obviously a bit out of date now. But every year we produce a brochure like this, which um, summarises what our Estuary Watch volunteers have gathered. And this goes into uh, caravan park offices, um, information centres, and we hand them out at those festivals and events as well. And people take them away and um, can sit down and just get a bit more of an idea about their local estuary. Uh, we also get that information out through our online database, which is currently being updated, um, and that's at estuarywatch.com.au. So you can go onto there and you can click on any of the estuaries where we have Estuary Watch volunteers and um, have a look at the data and, you know, you can, you can graph it, you can interrogate it, and whatever you want to find out about the Estuary Watch data for that estuary, it's all available there for the public. So in our region, which is the Karangamite region, this is a map here of the Karangamite region where I work. And as I said before, Estuary Watch is statewide, but just in our area here, where Estuary Watch started in 2006, we've got 13 active Estuary Watch groups. So that accounts for 96 individuals who go out monthly and spend their own personal time gathering Estuary Watch data, which is just... Um, it's an amazing commitment and it's, um, I guess, also an amazing contribution to our knowledge of estuaries. So tonight we've got some Estuary Watch volunteers here. So could you raise your hand if you volunteer for Estuary Watch? Thank you. Well done. <laughs> um, so these guys... Um, 
all the groups generally meet once a month and they collect observation and photos at the estuary mouth. So this is um, down at the Jelly Brown Estuary and um, one of our volunteers down there taking her monthly photo of the mouth of the estuary so we can record that condition. Um, we, as I said, we collect um, conditions at the mouth. So this is a picture down at Spring Creek Estuary and um, it's like um, a game of where's Wally? These people are here tonight. So they're just um, measuring the sand berm at the mouth of the estuary. So seeing how high um, the sand berm builds up at the mouth, that's the berm's the name of the sand that crosses the mouth of the estuary. And we also do um, water quality monitoring. And this is another game of where's Wally? So at supper, you can all like have a bit of a play. So one of these people's here tonight as well. And we get, these guys are getting our water quality data. So this is, um, another corner, cornerstone of our monitoring um, program where these guys go out monthly and they look at how salty the water is, um, how much oxygen's in the water, um, the temperature, and they do that at depth because the estuaries, it's really, um, you can have really different conditions at the surface of the water down through the, um, down through the water column. So this is, I guess, what it's all about as well. It's, um, look how happy I am at that photo, by the way. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been happier than that photo. <laughs> um, so that's what Estuary Watch is all about. It makes you happy. So, uh, <laughs> so this is our Barwon and Thompson Estuary Watch groups, or most of them. Um, and so at the end of each month, this group here, um, they will capture um, a really good snapshot of what's going on in their estuary. And so for some of our estuaries, we've got perhaps about eight years of data now. So we've got a really nice long-term data set built up through this citizen science program. So um, we can get a really good understanding if the health of our estuaries are improving or deteriorating over time. Um, and I guess just something I wanted to say is, you know, this volunteering people do is obviously valuable now, if an event happens now, but it's also going to be valuable long after we're all gone, you know, in 50, 100 years, that data is still going to be there and it's still going to tell us about our estuaries. And I think that's one of the main things that I think is valuable about Estuary Watch, that we're creating this um, legacy for future generations as well. So if anyone is not involved in Estuary Watch and is interested, please come and talk to me or Rose tonight um, about Estuary Watch, because as you can see, it's pretty awesome. So